Hey guys, how are you doing? Awesome. Um, first, I think I just am curious who I'm talking to today. I have kind of a business design background, so I'm curious um, who here has their own business? Okay, so a few of you. Who here does design? Awesome. Who here does more of like the tech, UX, UI stuff? Or just straight developer, no design? Any of you guys there? So it's like a design group. Okay. And you guys all work for someone. If you didn't raise your hand as an entrepreneur, you um, work for a company. Is that kind of what? Okay. And then who does freelance on the side? Anyone? Awesome. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much for helping me um, understand that. So <clears throat> the topic today is how to, how to get involved in the community, like what, why that's important. And I feel like that's been my spiel for a long time. Uh, even when I started uh, Design Dev, that's a few years ago, that's the uh, group he was talking about. Like that was kind of the point of it, is to like get people involved, get people to do stuff. But I feel like you guys know that already. And you, you know like what the community needs from you. Like in, you need to show up, uh, you need to do stuff, you need to meet more people, you need to be bold and get out there and, and do more stuff and you know, make your mark in this community. Um, I feel like you guys just don't need a guilt trip. Like that isn't going to get you out of your house on a cold January night. There's something there that's kind of stopping people from like getting involved. It's not just going to be like that, like, okay, that, that feeling that I need to do something that's just not strong enough. Um, so I want to kind of talk for a little bit how I kind of uh, fell into this. Uh, I think forever I kind of fall into decisions, like it just kind of made sense that I would do freelance on the side just because we needed extra money. Or it kind of made sense that we, um, you know, started our own business because we weren't really happy uh, not having enough time with the kids or uh, with our current work situation. And then it kind of made sense to start Design Up because we were alone at home and didn't know anyone and needed to meet more people. So that we just kind of like kept making these decisions that kind of kept pushing us forward, and that's a really great way to get involved if, uh, you know, based on the, um, your necessity or anything like that. But it just kind of like cornered us into the situation that we didn't really have a big plan for, if that makes sense. Um, the reason I talk just how we kind of fell into this is one of the things is, you know, as uh, as this leader that I was, um, I was I we had Design Dev, which was this meeting for designers and developers, and um, we were doing events up until um, about a year ago. Rory was actually a big help uh, with some of those, and the thing is, we we had these monthly events, and they were evenings, and the talks were great. They were very inspiring and got us out there. But me as a leader, I was not prepared with uh, the longevity that required something to keep it going. And um, I'm going to talk about what exactly that was and how you guys can kind of learn from my mistakes. So one of the things that, uh, you know, as what makes a good community is we come together, we um, support each other, we have um, good feedback, we're not tearing each other down. But part of the other thing that makes a community great is that we have a lot of people who are influential. We have a lot of people who have beliefs that need to, um, that are spoken for and stood for. And then we have a lot of ins inspiration and a lot of other people helping each other up. Um, and we need that still. So 
hold on. So we have this community. I want to, I want to give you permission is what I want to do. Because you don't need the guilt trip. You don't need to me to tell you, like, this is all the ideas you can do to get involved. What you need is permission to take care of you, yourself, and be that leader and be that inspiring person that shares your beliefs with other people in this community. Because it's not just, you know, us all getting together and being one big happy family. It's us leading each other towards a bigger vision and becoming something greater than what we are right now. Um, three things in order for you to start taking care of you yourself more in order to be that leader, to be that person. I'm so glad that you guys um, have pen and paper too because I didn't have slides. So if you're taking notes, this is great. Um, <laughs> I think these three things aren't just about building a better community and building like you being becoming a better person. Like it's not just you becoming a better person for the community. It's for everything you want to do in life. Um, you want to you know, become a better employee so that you can rise the ranks and be trusted and, um, you know, be trusted to take on a certain level of responsibility and have that just creativity at work. And then you want that with your client relationships, being able to lead your client and to make the right decisions for their project because you have a lot of um, heart invested into specific projects. And you want this, like, this leadership. You need this to be the best person you can be in order to just affect people and, you know, help people and grow, grow the community, but also just, like, grow the people around you, the people that you know personally. Um, so these three things. One, you have to make sure that imposter syndrome is not getting in your way. Um, so I actually have argued with people on this subject before uh, because I am very much, I don't, I recognize that imposter syndrome might exist and might show up, but I refuse to let, to believe that it is going to be around forever and that you can't get rid of it. Um, in fact, I think if you, let it exist and say that it's always going to be there, then you've already lost, like you're not giving yourself a way to get around it and a way to not let it weigh on you. Um, and I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit how you might be able to get rid of this imposter syndrome. And I'm talking to like a room full of smart people so I know this is going to bug the hell out of you. Um, but your skills, like the things that you know and the things that you're able to do, don't make you better than anyone else. And someone else's skills, someone else having more time put in than you, or someone else being able to do more than you, doesn't make them better than you. Um, we are all kind of on this journey, and we all want to learn and be more productive and prove that we are, uh, you know, worthy for, like, a certain number of dollars to be paid. But it's not the skills themselves that make that worth it, if that makes sense. Probably a lot of you have a superior over you who knows way less stuff than you, yet they make more money than you. And I'm just saying, like, the, the skills that you kind of hold yourself, like it's always good to keep learning and keep growing in that respect, but those skills are not tied to a dollar, are not tied to your self-worth. Um, I used to, as a designer, that's my background, I'm a marketer now, um, more so business owner. I don't know if, that, if you still love me for that, but... Um, I used to pride myself on being perceptive. Like I could just kind of feel what other people were thinking or feel how someone might receive a certain thing. And I would, um, and I actually think Rory probably, uh, 
he's very much into the UX stuff and studies like how people make decisions. So he'll probably laugh like or scoff, I guess, at how, how I used to design things. But I used to design based on what I would think someone else would react to something. And, um, and basically make up stories for people without having concrete data. And I would guess like what someone might be thinking if we're in a conversation together or, or you know, if they happen to be quiet or happen to be um, a little bit standoffish and like, what are they thinking about me? Like, what is that story that is about me? Or what, what is going on that I have caused? Um, and really, like, that's a very selfish way of looking at a situation when, you know, like, people, people have millions of reasons for being busy or being, you know, they have other things weighing on them. It's not always about you. Um, it's not, you don't, even if it is about you, you making up that story of it not, whether it's true or not, like, it doesn't serve you. So, like, you don't know what that person is thinking. You don't know what other people are thinking. So it doesn't serve you. It's great to ask for feedback and get a lot of feedback if you're looking, if you're designing for people. But as far as making up stories in your head, like, that perceptiveness is not going to serve you. It's only going to kind of push you in the direction that you already want, wanted to go. So if you are kind of determined to have this imposter syndrome, determined that people are kind of out to get you, determined that, uh, you know, you're not worth what everyone else is worth, then that story that you make up for other people, whatever they're thinking, that's going to prove you right, and you're only going to kind of continue down the spiral. Um, you can turn that around. For one, just like not, you know, stop making up stories what other people are thinking about you. Um, and the other thing is, like start standing true, start standing firm on who you are and what you're doing and what you believe and start finding like those truths for you and your, like if you do find pride in your skills, like what specifically are those skills, like what, what do you bring to that and start being truly productive and find pride in that production and find pride in, in that and that stuff, so that you can continue to just find, not see other people, not see yourself as an imposter. Like, find things to be proud of, of yourself. Um, number two, so that's the imposter syndrome part, specifically. Number two, you have to find a vision you have to have a vision that's bigger than what you have right now. Like, bigger than your right now vision. You have to have a long-term, clear vision for not only yourself, but for this community, for your workplace, for, the thi for your family in your life. You have to have that long-term vision. Um, now, I'm a marketer, remember? And so I uh, make weird parallels of marketing. My favorite marketer of all time is Jesus Christ. Um, because, and I, I think that whether you believe uh, he is God or not, he, his message is probably the most viral, powerful message out there. And you can know this because right now some people had um, kind of outward happy expressions, and then some of you are like getting really tense when I talk about this. That's like proving me right that this message was very um, powerful, <laughs> like very, uh, causes a lot of emotions. Um, but one of my favorite things about him is that he had this long-term vision for himself and kind of this end goal, and along the way he didn't stop like, he, he protected himself, and he protected hit the people that he was for. And he, um, like, he would hide in certain cases just so that he could get rest from away from people. Or he would not be for, like, the people who were obviously against him, that he would turn them away. So it's just, like, he had that long-term and goal. And even though he, uh, like, 
throughout his life, he was good. He wasn't like altruistic, making sure that he uh, convinced everyone, saved everyone, that kind of thing. Um, so what I'm saying is this, this long-term vision for yourself, like you have to have that goal, like what does that long-term security look like for you? Like what is the end goal? Like what does long-term wealth look like for you? And be really clear, have that clear vision for you, for your life, for your community. Like what does that long-term look like for you? Because there's so much in the short term that is going to stand in your way. Like there's, there's short-term fear. There's, you're going to want to guard and protect like the status quo that you have. And that's going to keep you from that long-term goal. If you are set on this long-term goal, you have to make sure that you are going to get there no matter what even if it means that you might be uncomfortable right now. And I will say, like, after this, um, after we did, we started our business for three years, uh, we did design dev, um, I was literally, like, hosting these meetings, um, paying out of pocket for the space and that kind of thing, and was making maybe, um, like, 5000 a month was a good month. So, like... Just having, having that, that 5000 a month for a business owner is, like, there's a lot of costs involved anyways. Um, uh, there's, I wasn't prepared to, okay, so back up. So I was, I was doing all of this, and then I had to get even more uncomfortable, more, like, I had to stop hosting those meetings because it wasn't serving me. And since I wasn't able to serve me, I couldn't serve other people. I had to stop and get even more uncomfortable. So we like uh, put some money into a program to help us learn how to actually make money. And I've since put money into me and my health and learning how to make me a better person. And Yes, it is uncomfortable. Like, obviously, we weren't making a lot of money. How did we even afford any of that? But, like, us being uncomfortable now in learning how to make money and learning how to be healthy is setting us up for those long-term goals. And later, I will be able to serve a lot of people because I'm uncomfortable now taking care of myself. Um, so that bigger vision, having that bigger vision for you, like you guys, um, you guys have to kind of get clear on what that is and why it's important to you, why, why that needs to happen and why it has to happen, why it's more important than whatever is right now standing in your way. Um, if you, if anything, that clarity like, that clarity is going to be the most important thing that ever happens to your life. Because having that clarity, like, that means, like, if you have a sucky employer who, you know, like, sucks up all your energy and you aren't able to be creative and uh, you aren't able to, like, share your gifts. Like, if that is, like, maybe it has, maybe they're giving you some money, but that doesn't give them permission to take advantage of who you are and, and what those long-term goals are for yourself. So you have to get clear on what that long-term goal is, get clear on, okay, what kind of sucky things might have to happen in the meantime, and then make sure that you have a plan in place to get there. Um, the final thing, number three, if you want to work on yourself and change this community around, um, you gotta learn to sell to sell. You got to learn to sell. Um, back to, well, as designers, you guys are really good at getting attention, and you're really good at making things attractive. Um, that is only, like, half of it. So, 
I don't know if you know how like a magnet works, like you have the attraction that pulls people in, but you also have to push, like there's equal sides, like there's a flip. You have to attract and you also have to push. Um, I think a lot of designers are really good at getting attention and making things beautiful, but they aren't good at pushing people. Um, and I will say, like, there's some connotations with selling that makes people feel, like, ugh, icky. Um, when I say I'm in marketing, I'm in, like, direct sale, not direct sales, um, di di I, don't, I don't even know what to, how to call it, direct response copywriting is more of what I do um, now for my own business. And... The thing about selling is it's, it's not like used car salesman selling. It's not about pushing what's best for you onto other people. True selling is listening with integrity. And, and that goes back to getting that feedback, truly asking all the right questions, like what, letting other people tell their story and tell you what they need from you. And list, truly listening, like, what are these people saying? Trying not to project what you have and what you want onto them. Um, I take a lot of sales calls for my business right now, and I will say, like, I ask a lot of questions. And any time that I put my needs in front of theirs, like, I lose the sale. Any time that I, like, even try to, like, if I, if I look at my bank account and it's not where I want it to be before then, I, well, I don't look at it anymore. Um, <clears throat> I, I make sure that I'm, uh, in fact, in, uh, what I choose to look at is, like, a, you know, a picture of a large city. Like, there's plenty of opportunity out there. I'm going into this call making sure that I am here for them. And I'm here to help them no matter what their situation is. Is this the right decision? Can I help them? Do they need to do this? But mostly, like, is this the right time? Like, I don't know. Like, how deep is this pain? I don't know. Like, so truly listening and getting that feedback, even if it is, like, your employer, your boss, or your client, making sure that they understand, like, like what, what is their story? Like, why do they truly need this? Getting them even to see, like, that big picture for them versus the small short term. Like, they also have to see, other people also have to see, like, what is that short term that's getting in their way, like, that's causing this misalignment between them and what they truly future want. Um, listening with integrity and... And just making sure that you are there for the other person. Um, the last thing, like learning to sell, and this is going to be true like in your design work, in your anything that you put out in front of other people. And it goes back to having those strong beliefs and kind of that strong stance. Like if you're going to push someone, you have to have a firm stance. Like if you physically want to push someone, you have to be strong. So if you are going to push someone and get them out of their comfort zone, get them to do what they really need to do and listen to them, it requires a transfer of emotion. So it's, if you are going to be a influencer or a leader, like having an emotion, having like this belief that you need to put out there and like, and help people through, if you are transferring this emotion like that's all the design is that's all like what what you are what you are as a leader like being able to transfer an emotion on like over to someone they're going to feel that if you are feeling like an imposter people are going to feel that if you are feeling like it's all about you and about your immediate needs people are going to feel that but if you have like strong beliefs and if you have a goal in mind that's bigger and if you have a mission trying to get people to do this really cool stuff and like be better people like they're going to feel that 
and they're going to be inspired by it. Um, basically, when people come together, like if you, if you have a community of people that come together, you can have like a group of influencers, like leaders who are all working together and becoming better people together and fighting for what they believe and making this place a better place. Or you can have just a bunch of people who are fighting for status. And I think to truly get around like that fight for status, you have to know the difference between selfishness and selflessness, which can get really confusing. Because, I mean, everything I just talked about, like you have to be for the other people and have that long-term goal for other people and be able to reach them on that selfless level and serve them. But right now, if you aren't ready to do that, you have to be selfish and you have to take care of yourself and know that that long-term goal is in place because you have you have to invest in you and you have to be almost selfish for that long-term vision if that makes sense um I think I covered everything that was on my this is this was my notes kind of scratchy um but I'm going to open it up if anyone has questions, specifically, I'd love to answer. Danielle? So where did I learn how to be comfortable with selling? Is that what the question is? So I would say there's two things two things there and for one a lot of making sure that you are taken care of and making sure that you take care of yourself is really important because like I said like if my bank account is lower than I want it to be and I look at it like I know that th that's not supposed to happen if I am transferring an emotion over to someone and that in selling that's going to be confidence that's going to be like I can take care of you but if I'm feeling like I can't take care of them and for whatever reason like I mean like my uh, before I started like this new like nutrition based diet my energy level was just kind of up and down all over the place and I wasn't there would be days I wouldn't be confident because I was feeding, filling my body with junk um now I like I see that I'm taking care of myself on a daily basis. So I would say like if you if as a designer, if you feel like you're taken care of and your job isn't on the line if you aren't going to win the design or if you um, let this go, you know what I'm talking um, like if if you don't always have to be right because your being right doesn't affect your standing in the company, then I think that, and you feel comfortable knowing that no matter what the outcome is, that the outcome is going to be good, no matter like what the journey is, that, that you have just like a better, a better way to, um, you're not looking out for yourself, you're looking out for that end goal, if that makes sense. Um, as far as like learning to sell and affecting people, I think that imposter syndrome is really big too. Making sure that 
that's not like weighing on you, making sure that you are for like for the other people. Um, Because really, like, learning to sell, like, that's you getting on someone else's level and making sure. um, Sorry, I'm going to be all over the place with this, but there is another example that I wanted to hit that I didn't. Um, There's actually a, it was a a gay rights movement in California, and they were trying to get the law passed. I'm really, like, all over the spectrum today. Um, This is, this was a, vote that they were trying to pass, and the way they did it was they went door knocking to a very um, conservative zip code, and what they did was they they knocked on people's doors, they told their story, and then they stopped talking, and they listened. And the other, the people who answered, they weren't, like, trying to convince them or trying to get, like, appeal they weren't like arguing why they need to vote a certain way. All they did was st- stand there and listen. They told their story, and then they let the other person tell theirs, and they won the vote. So there's something very powerful with just you telling your story and taking a stance and having beliefs, but then also making sure that you are for the other person and listening to them, and making sure that you are making like they are being heard because they are going to respond really well. It's not that they were convinced or that they that you want an argument. It's that they feel heard and that you are going to take care of them and you have their best interest in mind. So, does that help? That was a really long answer. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Go ahead. Um, sorry, in a gist, what gets people out of their house, what isn't, how not to give them a guilt trip, but also to get people out. Um, I would say that Oklahoma City is not different than anywhere else. I would say, I mean, if anything, geography-wise, it's more spread out and people have to drive, but I don't think that that's what it is. Um, I would say the lack of passion and the lack of leaders taking a stance and, and, you know, proving that this is worth it is probably closer to that. But as far as getting people out of their house and getting people excited about things. Um, Part of that is like learning how to sell. You have to sell events. Um, You have to sell like what that is. And uh, as far as, that's probably more on on the marketing side, like making things look attractive, using curiosity to get people out of their house, like always uh, keep things changing. That's one thing that I learned like throwing events every month. It's not gonna be like the same like, people will show up the first time, and then they won't show up. And it's because they're just curious to check it out. Like, what is this about? If you can keep people curious and keep people hanging on, that keeps them showing up. And that's just part of, like, appealing to human nature. Like, human nature is just going to get bored and sit in their house. But if you can keep them inspired and keep them curious and then also transfer that emotion over to them, like, why this is important, why it's good that they keep showing up and that being true, like them finding truth in that why, I guess, um, that'll keep them coming up. Did that answer your question? (laughs) Anyone else?
you say more leg It, it absolutely takes a lot of energy in order to get a lot of energy out. Um, and honestly, that was part of the reason me as a solo event holder didn't work out because I was trying to get a lot of energy back from what I wasn't able to put in. And it, it does, like it, like it does take consistent energy and if you don't have something that's fueling that like if that vision isn't strong enough or if it's not like if it's not for profit if it's not for anything like there's not going to be enough of a momentum like it almost like has to be something strong enough to pull people in if that makes sense That's it. Uh, for one, I plan out my weeks really well. I think as an entrepreneur, I have to do that. And I make sure that I don't stack my, oh, uh, what is, sorry, what is my regimen for self-talk so that I do not let imposter syndrome creep in? Is that a good, okay. So um, for one, I try not to overload myself with tasks. Um, I actually just, probably recently learned this, um, but whenever I plan out what I'm going to accomplish in a way that lets me accomplish those things, that makes me feel accomplished. Um, when, and I don't do this as much as I want to, but I have a document that lets me see that uh, at a quick glance what I've done for clients how I've helped them. Um, I, I take snippets of like what people have said that helps like remind me on a daily basis what I'm doing this for. I also have like that vision, it's not a vision board, it's just like what I want, a list of what things that I need to accomplish. If I want certain things in my life, like that grand vision, then I also need to do this and this. So just having like that planned out and even like just reminding myself often helps me kind of stay that course. Um, I was reminded recently that I do have to take even more good care of myself because as a business owner, the way I get more money for myself is if I am able to pour into more people. So not just, um, not just like, you know, the people I do business with, but then, you know, my clients need a lot of my attention. My, the people that I talk to, like the circle around that, like my audience needs a lot of attention and they need like me to kind of pour into that. I cannot pour like into these people. I can't give to them with, if I'm not like ready to do that. If I don't feel like I'm for one, like accomplished enough to do that which is not, like I said, it's not about the skills that I offer. It's all about that energy transfer and me being for them. So if I'm not, if I'm not able to do that, like I have to take care of myself is really what that is. And that's kind of where like you find true alignment too, like making sure that your visions align with like your current self, taking care of you right now and having fun right now. And then also having like that future self in mind and making sure that that future self is going to have just as much fun as, as you are now. 
Any other questions? Is there one? Have I heard of community of practice? No, I have not. I'm not entirely sure what you mean. So there are different groups of people that are able to be, their needs are satisfied? Okay. And the purpose of having all those skills, individual people can meet those skills? Within the company? Yeah, maybe after. Anyone else? Okay. <laughs>